Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to this uh, online training section, session for brain waves. Um, at the beginning, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Marina Lazic. I'm VP Recruitment and Training for Brain Waves for this upcoming 2021st and 2022nd year. And it's my pleasure to help you to, to help you learn how to present this amazing material to the children from grade four to six. Um, again, at the end of this session, you will have our e email and you can always email us. We will be here to help you. And I believe we will give an extra QA session if you have questions, because we do want to make an excellent impression and to the teachers and to the children. Uh, again, always open for questions and for critiques, and I hope you guys will enjoy. Uh, so at the beginning, uh, we will start with a brief introduction who we generally are, our organization, and a few more details about us. So this program, Brainwave, is a program sponsored by Parachute Canada's national charity, uh, dedicating to reducing the devastating impact of preventable injuries. And this program is coordinated by Injury Prevention Center, and it's located here in Edmonton. So big goal, prevent, injury, prevent injuries. And you will see through this presentation, you will have to point out a few times how to prevent injuries. But we will come to that point. So what is Brainwaves? So Brainwaves is a free, informative, and the most important, very fun, half-day neuroscience presentation for students in grades four to six. The mission, our mission, uh, is to create a safer Canada, and we want to do that by preventing a serious and fatal injuries through evidence-based solution that advocate and educate. And here is provided link to the parachute organization where you can find the very useful videos, and I will encourage you to watch them and to, because they will help you get ready for this amazing experience. Even though it will be online for you who are watching this, um, I personally prefer in person, but both experiences are amazing. And I'm pretty sure that you will all enjoy and you will definitely want to come back. At least I always, I always come back. Anyway, um, we are modern organization, which means we are available on social networks, uh, and these are our pages uh, on Instagram and Facebook, uh, regularly monitored by one of our vice presidents. So you are encouraged to follow us uh, and to become our members. Uh, and um, we are a large team. And um, what I really like about this team is that we are trying to build this team spirit and everything what we do is team related. So I'm working with everyone very closely and they are helping me. Uh, and in the same way, other vice presidents are working with each other. So uh, this is amazing experience. And again, I encourage everyone to volunteer for brain waves because you will definitely get amazing friends, you will meet amazing people, and you will learn how to function in team, which is probably one of the most important characteristics that you will need for future job search or for everything in life. There are 10 of us vice presidents, um, and there are eight members at large. And we have monthly meetings, and we are regularly consulting with each other again. Everything is about team spirits, and that is extremely important. So again, team building communication, the most important characteristics that you will need in future. And you will learn how to do that if you become Brainwave members. At least I learned a lot. Uh, here are our amazing team members. Uh, we have two co-presidents, uh, Alea and Joanna. Uh, we have vice president in charge for materials, Warren. Uh, uh, vice president for promo and events, Darksh. 
myself, Marina Lazic, I am VP for recruitment and training. Uh, there is Noah who is in charge for schools and Stephanie in charge for scheduling. Mark, who is the, doing an amazing job with administration. Ramesh, also doing a fantastic job with the content. So presentation that I will give you today is made by her and other team members who are helping with that. Again, we are building team, we are team build, we are generating team building activities. That's the most important here. Uh, and what are you going to do when you present this to children, actually before you present to children. So first of all, uh, you will have to review the PowerPoint presentation that you will receive. And during this video, I will lead you through this presentation. Now, don't be afraid because you will have speaker's notes that contain all information about the brain in general, and this, you will have described the activities that will be performed online. So again, no need to be scared because everything is written there. All what you need to do is to read. You don't have to be a neuroscientist. You can be like myself, biologist, but I'm sure that you have more than enough information from our speaker notes. There is an activity booklet with answer key that you will also receive. Also, teachers in schools will be emailed questions before presentation so they can share with students. You don't have to worry about that. And I'm giving you here additional resources. There are videos, parachute videos, that you can access through this link. I'm encouraging you to watch them because these videos show demonstration of activities that we are doing online. If it's in person, we do slightly different activities, but watch videos. They're also very informative and fun. Uh, there is an email, Brainwaves official email. We are always available for questions and we are very happy to answer. Once when you revise all this information, you'll have to complete a quiz. There are 10 or 11 questions. Uh, that we have for you generated through Google form and um, all information that you need to pass actually to get at least 80% on this quiz is in speaker notes. So you won't have any problems, I'm sure. Usually those questions are very easy. I'm trying to be nice and not to create very hard questions. So you need to get 80%. We are trying to keep selection so only the best people can present. Uh, and usually everyone is good, so that's not a problem. Uh, very important, uh, you need to complete a waiver form. Link will be sent to you. This is very important. Very often people forget to do that, but this is critical. You have to sign that, and then you have to email back to us so you sign, you scan, and email back to us. We have to have your signature on that form. And that's very important. Now, hypothetically, you pass the quiz, you sign the form. Next step is a group interview, in which this is the first time that we are doing this. Again, we are trying to select the best possible volunteers. So you will have an interview online with two of recruitment and training committee members. Usually it will be me and someone else from the team. As I said, we are working as a team. So you will have a few questions on, during that interview. Uh, it will not be hard. You will be informed about that ahead of time. And I'm sure everyone will do great. Uh, let's say hypothetically you passed interview and now you are ready to go, you can present. That means you need to sign up for presentation time slot. And then you need to present to the children. What does that mean? So I encourage everyone, uh, and I will tell you why, to log in 15 minutes earlier on provided Zoom or Google Meet link why that matters. It matters because 
teachers will also log in earlier. And uh, I always like to talk to teachers ahead of time uh, and to ask about class in general, because teachers know their students very well. So they will tell you if some students need special approach, if you need to be more careful with another student, uh, you have to ensure they all have activity booklet. I, I would encourage you to have activity booklet open on your computer or on your table if you want to print it. You don't have to. I like printed version, whatever you prefer. But be ready for them. That's why you log in 15 minutes earlier. You can check whether your presentation works. Just it it makes you feel better to be ready. At least that's how it works for me. Uh, make sure you know material before presentation. That's why you have to review slides, slides and speaker notes. Uh, you can always have notes and technically read, but I would encourage you to learn the material. It's really not hard and it looks better on you if you are not reading, if you're just talking, if you're uh, relaxed. Again, not everyone is uh, talented for public speaking, but that's why we have these selection, um, selection processes so we can determine uh, who would be the best. Um, very important. You are going to communicate with children and children sometimes have questions that you won't know how to answer. Surprisingly, like we think that children know less than us, but sometimes they ask you something that you are really like not sure what to answer. This is the moment when you really, really have to say, Oh my God, this is great question. However, I don't know the answer. I will look and get back to you as soon as I can. And you will do that. Maybe not you per se, but you can tell us and we will get back to the teacher with the answer to the provided question. You will never ever say something which might be incorrect just to satisfy students' curiosity. That is big no-no, because those children are like sponges. They will just soak up everything what you say. And it will be hard for them later if you taught them something wrong. So if, if you are not sure, you just say, this is a great question. However, I'm not exactly sure what is the right answer. I will get back to you as soon as possible. That's very important. And now let's get started. So from now on, you will see presentation that you will actually present to children once when you go through all selection process. Sorry about that. So when you come, when you start your presentation, when teacher tells you that everything is good to go, you will have this slide and you will say, hello, everyone. My name is XY. I'm Marina Lazic. Uh, this is a great day to learn about brain. And I'm very excited to present you these amazing facts about the most important organ of our body, which is brain. So let's start. What are we going to talk about? So today I will tell you about the importance of the brain. I will tell you how to protect the brain and what the brain does. I will try to teach you how the brain works and why it's so important to protect the brain. Now, here is one interesting thing. Jello brain. And again, this is something that children really liked in the past times when we were able to go in person in classroom. Uh, a night before, we would get material to make this jello brain. So you just use a regular jello. I personally never made it. My husband does it. So uh, you get like um, some 
hat where you pour jello and when you invert it it looks exactly like that and it's moving like that and i was carrying that brain to the school and then children were able to touch it and it was amazing and you can also explain them that that's actually what they had in their head and it makes good analogy now now we can do that online unfortunately but you can tell them that this is how actually brain looks so it looks like it's it has the texture like a jello and it moves like that inside of your skull so you can actually make your brain model at home if you are interested you just need some jello and they like it some of them might even make it for science fair i i'm judging science fair every year and there are interesting things that people make from jello and brain is among them <laughs> then you start with the questions so let me ask you why it's brain so important and i always try to encourage children to answer because some of them are very proactive and they want to answer of course make sure uh, that you include everyone in classroom because there will always be those very smart children who want to interact and who will always be like i want to answer i want to answer so you try to give opportunity to others anyway maybe there will be nobody who wants to answer but i try to engage them uh, it, it leaves good impression definitely so brain is important because it controls the ability to think move see hear taste and smell uh, i like to show different organs like move think see hear taste smell again you don't have to do it it's up to you tell me what do you think how much your brain weighs like how many pounds or kilograms and then you let them guess you tr you in every moment you try to engage your classroom as much as you can don't just scan through slides try to bring them up to interact with you and they will have answers some of them are correct some of them are completely out but you always say mm, good guess and let 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 them to give a few like three four answers but not too much because you need to keep time so brain is around three pounds around 1200 grams are you surprised with that i used to like to ask them do you think if your brain is heavier that do you are smarter and they will always say yes well that's not true so i mean i always try to make some joke because children like that and i like interacting with them so it make me feel better anyway now we start uh, with um, cells cells in the brain so tell me do you know what is a cell again some of them might guess some of them might know some of them might not have clue so you will tell them the human brain is made of specialized cells called neurons can you guess how many neuron cells are in your brain and they will say one two five nobody i mean maybe somebody will guess but usually no so cell is actually a building block to our body and our brain is made of 100 billion neurons so that's a lot of cells in our brain right so neuron very important term for this talk so i want you guys to think about the brain like about the big message center what that means is that messages are sent and received in the brain all the time like in call center so neurons send and receive messages and telling us how to think move sense smell neurons do not grow back if they are injured 
So that is additional reason why we really have to protect them. So you give them some analogy. So they will now think about the brain as a message center and neurons as about people, they will imagine neurons as a people who are making those phone calls in big call center. That's how they will memorize easy. Now, a little more about neurons. So these cells are different from other cells in our body because they have specialized branches. They, have spe they look special. So here are those branches. A long branch is axon. Short branch, branches are called dendrites. And you can see how neurons look on picture here. Axons actually send messages to the other neurons, while short branches, dendrites, are receiving messages from other neurons. And this is how great animation here looks, like illustrating how messages are traveling through brain. So again, axon sends messages and dendrite receives messages. And I love this animation. You can stay on this slide a little bit so they can observe, they like it. A longer neuron means a longer time to send signal. Concussions. Children usually like to share stories about concussions because some of them actually went through concussion themselves. So you ask them, so does someone know what is concussion? And there will be somebody who say, I know I had concussion. So concussion is a simple, a type of a brain injury. So any blow to the head, face or neck or a body which cause sudden jarring of the brain inside the skull may cause concussion. So what do you think? What are some physical symptoms of concussion? Do you think that concussion is a visible injury? And they can tell you, yes, it's visible or no. And you will tell them, hmm, let's play this game now to see some of concussion symptoms. And let's see if that is visible. So you will tell them, what happens with your body when you get concussion? So fever, headache, dizziness, sore throat, which of these are symptoms of concussion? So some of them might know, some of them might not know. So is sore throat symptom of concussion? No, it might be symptom of COVID, but not concussion. What about headache? Yes, definitely can happen. Dizziness? Yes. So this is a guessing game. And they have this in uh, their activity booklets. So what about sensitivity to light or noise? Is that a symptom of concussion? Yes, definitely it can happen. Having lots of energy, is that happening when you have concussion? Not exactly. So you're playing a guessing game about symptoms of concussion. And you can also ask them, do you, did someone here have concussion? If somebody says, yes, I had, can you tell us about your symptoms? And many of them would be very happy to share. And again, the same thing. If you have difficulty remembering, can that be a symptom of concussion? Yeah. But if you have obsessive thoughts, like you can't stop thinking about a candy, that's not a symptom of concussion. That just means you like candies. Confusion, yes. So they really like this game. Uh, and I personally had experience when I cannot stop children from sharing story about concussion. 
uh, some children like talking about that. They probably are not aware how dangerous concussion can be. Uh, so they like that idea. Oh, I'm the one who had brain moved in the skull. I'm special. So it, it, I find this very, very, um, very nice and amazing experience, even though it's not very nice when you know that somebody had concussion. I like the fact that some children like to interact and share the story. Uh, and the same here. So these are all symptoms or not symptoms of concussion. So you will ask them to guess, is this symptom of concussion? No, yes. So make sure you know. And at the end, this slide is showing actually some concussion symptoms. So these are basically correct answers. So you will you will go through them through this table with them. So let's summarize. If you had concussion, you can have physical symptoms, you can have cognitive symptoms and emotional symptoms. And then you can say physically, you can lose conscience, you can have headache, you can vomit, you can feel pressure in your head, you can be dizzy. You can have low energy or be sensitive to light or noise. In terms of thinking, you can be generally confused. You can have difficulty remembering or concentrating, and you can feel like you are in the fog. And last but not least, you can have emotional symptoms, which is like, I'm not feeling like myself. You can be sad or moody or nervous. So these are all symptoms of concussion. Now, this is important that I really want you guys to point out while presenting. Start, start activity, memorize this, and you will encourage children to memorize this as a star, like a star. So if you injure yourself, if you have something like concussion, stop playing, tell adult, get assessed and the rest, star. That's how you protect your brain, with a star. Stop playing, tell, assess, rest. And again, what I said at the beginning, a few times through the presentation, we will point out how we protect brain. Again, our mission is to prevent injuries. So we want to protect your brain and our brain and how we do that wear a helmet when you're riding a bike because that's how you will protect your brain and that's important because brain is the most significant organ in our body that help us to think to smell to feel to taste basically to be who we are to be one rule is how you wear helmet because if you don't wear it right, then you are not protecting your brain. And this is showing how you should put a helmet. So two fingers above eyebrows to the bottom of your helmet. V, four fingers to make V shape around the bottom of here and one finger under the strip beneath your chin. Again, if you don't wear it right, you don't protect your brain. A few questions that you will ask them. Should you wear a helmet over a baseball hat or ponytail? So you ask them, most of them will say, no, that wouldn't be a right way to protect your brain. And uh, then you are starting with the anatomy of the brain. Again, they will have booklets. You will have activity booklet, so they will be able to follow. Now, you will tell them that this Java brain looks like a brain inside of your skull and it's uh, very precisely divided on the lobes. And there are four lobes. Which are those four lobes? You will present to them using this slide. So this one here is a frontal lobe, then parietal lobe, temporal, and occipital. Each of these four lobes have very specific function and does very important things. 
for yourself. Now, what that means is if you hurt, if you injure one of your brain lobes, what can happen? Simple, life wouldn't be the same. Again, brain is the most important organ in our organ, in our body, which means that without a brain, if we damage one of brain lobes, we just wouldn't be ourselves, our life would be completely changed. That's why we have to protect brain. Now, as I mentioned, each of these four lobes has very specific function in the body. And what happens when you damage one of them? So here are a few examples. So Rob fell off his bike and he did bad job. He didn't wear helmet. What happened is that when he came from the hospital, he had troubles with his math homework. He couldn't make plans and he had issues with speaking. So which part of his brain was damaged? Frontal lobe. Next one. Brittany fell while she was snowboarding and she wasn't wearing the helmet. When she came home that night, she wanted to watch TV, but she noticed that everything was blurry. So which part of the brain, which lobe was damaged? Occipital. So what does that mean? Occipital lobe is in charge of vision, while other lobes are in charge for other things. For example, frontal lobe would be in charge for cognitive thinking. So they will have all of these in front of them and they will know how to answer, hopefully. Now, you will move to the five senses. And children usually know about these senses. Some of them know, but they are familiar with them. Let's say they are familiar. So there are five senses, vision, touch, smell, taste, hearing. All of them are controlled by brain. So you start with a smell. So you can ask them, so can you think of some sm important smell that you like? Do you like to feel rose or any other flower? Do you like cinnamon? And they will tell you yes or no. Then you ask them, what do you think about smelly socks? Do they smell nice? They will say no. So some, it, Try to make some joke about that. Now, you smell thanks to your nose. So let's see how actually the sense of smell function. So they will have all that in activity booklets and there will be questions that they will answer. So you will show them this picture which says, so imagine that you have this garlic, which is something that you smell. It's called, it's called odorant. Again, on next slide, you will see that. So this is how a signal travels through your nose to the olfactory bubble, to the olfactory center, and all far to the hippocampus in the brain. And again, everything is controlled by brain. So let's see which lobe controls smell. The lobe that controls smell is temporal lobe. So you can tell them if you accidentally damage your temporal lobe, you would not be able to feel the smell of nice flowers such as roses. So that wouldn't be good. That's why you have to protect your brain. And this is important. So there are steps to the brain or as I like to call it signaling pathway. You will have this for each sense. So how you call substances that you smell, like garlic or smelly socks, they are called odorants. So that's a step one. These molecules are received somewhere. First, they are received in olfactory smell area, olfactory or smell area, synonym. 
but in the brain, the signal is received in temporal lobes. So steps to the brain would be odorant that you smell here. There is olfactory area in the nose and the signal travels to the brain in the temporal lobe. Again, eh, here is an example. So what happens if you hurt your temporal lobe? You lose your sense of smell. And that can, that special condition called anosmia, when you lose a sense of smell. So you can ask them, so would it be good if you lose your sense of smell and then you are not able to feel smelly socks? They might say, yeah, that would be great. But then you say, hmm, and imagine a situation where losing a sense of smell might be dangerous. What that can be? Imagine there is a fire in your building and there is a smoke, but you don't have sense of smell, so you cannot feel it and you don't go out. You can be seriously injured. So it's very important to protect your temporal lobe so you can keep your sense of smell. A taste. So let's talk about food. We all like food. We all are enjoying food. So can you think about some specific taste that you like? And they will start sharing. I like chocolate. I like pizza. Uh, it's always good to encourage them to talk because then you will feel better about yourself. At least that's how it works for me. So here is a question for you guys. Have you noticed that if you are sick, like you get cold, your food doesn't taste so good? Why is that? They will maybe say something. Probably they will not know, but you try to ask them. It's amazing how cool things you can hear. I like hearing things from child, from children. That's great experience, really. You just know how how far their thinking goes. You would never, I wouldn't ever be able to imagine that. But then you tell them correct answer. That is because smell and taste work together. And now let's talk about tongue. So that's where your sense of taste starts. So the same how you had for the smell, where you had odor and smell area in the brain, you will have similar situation with the sense of taste where you receive information on the tongue and the taste buds. So. Here is the tongue that shows taste buds where you receive signal and that signal is transferred all the way to the brain. So taste buds are the most important here because that's where you receive signal and you know is something sweet, is it salty, is it sour or bitter. So there are more taste buds at the front of your tongue and there are less taste buds at the back of the tongue. That's why you can sense better something sweet on the top. And uh, you will have different types of tastes. And you can ask them, tell me what's your favorite taste? And the most of them will say it's sweet or salty. I usually say that my favorite taste is bitter because I like coffee. And they will be like, no, coffee. Too young, they're too young for coffee. And you tell them, yeah, there are four different types of uh, taste, the bitter, sweet, sour, salty. And let's learn now which lobe controls a taste. So the lobe that controls this is parietal lobe. And then we move forward to the steps to the brain. Again, first step, substances that you taste. So let's make an analogy. For the sense of smell, we had odorants. Here we have tastants. So tastants would be the food that you put on your tongue. These molecules are received on the taste buds. And in the brain, they are per perceived on parietal lobes. So these are three steps to the brain. And now sense of vision. We use our eyes to be able to see the amazing world around us. So our eye is very is complex. So it has the different parts from the outside and you will lead them, you will tell them. There is an eyelid 
there is a pupil, there is a sclera, and there is iris. So those are all parts of your eyes that you, you can show them pointing out that eyelid is here, the pupil is this tiny little dot in the center of your eye, and there is sclera, which is this white, large surface and there is an iris which can have different colors or something like that and then you explain them how signaling in eye works so personally for me a uh, sense of vision uh, was always the hardest one to memorize in general physiology but this is not general physiology so you don't have to be an expert so you can but you have to be familiar that's why you have speaker's notes. So you will lead them through the terms such as retina, very important part of the eyes because there are some very specific cells on retina. There is a blind spot, the place where optic nerve is leaving the eye. And then you introduce them with those most important cells in the eye, which are rods and cones on retina. And you will tell them for what are rods and cones in charge. So how you will memorize, for example, cones are in charge for color vision, like C, color, and rods are in charge for night, uh, night, night day vision, like black, white vision. Cones are for colors. Now, visual pathway, how the light goes. Again, this can be very complex. Uh, Phys physics, you don't have to go in details, you don't have to be expert, but you need to know that the signal comes from light that hits the eye and then goes through retina where you have rods and cones, and then that signal leaves eye and travels all back to the brain. Where at the brain, at occipital lobe, what that means is if you hurt occipital lobe, you won't be able to see. And if you remember at the beginning of this presentation, we had the example, Brittany fell and hurt brain. She came at night, tried to watch TV, but everything was blurry. That is because she damaged occipital lobe. And again, steps to the brain. We see light, again, light hits, the eye, I mean, hits, metaphorically hits. Light rays are received at the retina. And again, on the retina, there are two types of cells that are called photoreceptors. That might be a new term for them. Rods are for dark vision and detection of movement, black, white. And Cones are for color vision and detection of details. So again, I memorize cones as a C color. Rods are black, white, like dark vision. Information from retina exit the eye at the blind spot. In the brain, the signal is received at occipital lobe. And then you have activity time and they love this activity. Again, not everyone will succeed in this, and there is nothing wrong with people who can. I never, I was never able to see this color after image. So basically, you will tell them to watch this image for one minute without blinking and without moving their face. So basically, just stare in the image. And then you change the slide and they should see inverted colors because of activities of rods and cons. Now, sometimes people won't be able to see that. I was never able to see. That just brain, that's how our brain works. It's unique for every individual. So there is nothing wrong with people who cannot see, it, but they like seeing it. And then you will do the same thing with this Canadian flag. So they stare and then when you change after one minute, they will see different colors. And they like this one as well, American flag, you do the same thing. Then there is a reversible figure illusion. And again, you probably already saw this, at least in those 
um, magazines that I used to read, you have these figures and then uh, it supposedly it would depends what you see first that kind of tells something about your personality. I never believed in that, but I don't know, maybe some, maybe, maybe it's true. But anyway, you can ask children what they see first. Uh, and some of them will say, I see a voice, I see a glass or two faces looking at each other. You ask them and you can also, and then you can explain them that these differences are coming from brain activities. Uh, again, make sure you check notes and make sure you know how to explain them. Uh, yep, uh, next thing, sense of hearing. Uh, you introduce them with the organ in charge of hearing, which are our ears. And there is an activity time here. So, mm, yeah, usually we 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 did we did this um, in person, so they will have some specific activities that they will perform online. So you should play them a video, music, actually music from YouTube, and they should listen. And again, teachers might do that as well. Uh, and then you will lead them through uh, importance of hearing. For example, why hearing matters? Communication, listen for danger, be aware of your surroundings, uh, enjoying your music. Again, in this activity, you should play them and ask them, you, you will play them something and they will tell you how they feel about it. Uh, I think teachers will probably do that. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, we used to have better activity when we do it uh, in person, mm, but because this is online, unfortunately, we cannot really engage ourselves. Uh, next. Again, we are going to introduce them through the signaling pathway. Like you, you will explain them that the sound that they hear comes through the ear, which is outer ear, then travels through the middle ear, comes to the inner ear. So these are three parts of our ear, even though we don't see all three of them. Uh, and then again, we will tell them which, which lobe of the brain controls it. It's called temporal lobe. Uh, next one is, again, steps to the brain. So in the same way how we had different uh, signaling pathways for, for other senses, the same is for sense of hearing. Just this time we hear sound waves. You remember when we talked about vision, first step was light, what we see. In this case, we have sound waves. Um, sound energy is received in cochlea, and in cochlea there are some specific cells that transmit this information to the brain. So those cochlea cells are hairy, so they can just transfer information. And in the brain, the signal is perceived in temporal lobe. So if you damage temporal lobe, you will not be able to hear music. And uh, this is how you will end. This is the last slide. At the end, you can say, so this is all for today. Uh, it was my pleasure talking to you. Uh, if you have any questions, please let teacher know and teacher will come back to us and we will do our best to answer your email, your question. And again, there are extra resources you can have this QR code that you can scan and we encourage you to do survey because we want to improve every year and your feedback is very important for us. And again, Brainwaves email, please contact us for everything that you need and 
this is for you, for volunteers. Uh, teachers also have our email, so they can come back to us. I don't think children personally can come to us, but teachers do. So this is all from me for now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, again, Brainwaves official email, um, you can always email us and we will do our best to respond. Um, I hope we will also have some QA sessions where I will try to provide help as much as I can. I'm trying to be available for everyone. I'm sure you will enjoy. This is amazing experience and I encourage you to come back every year. For me, this is one of the most important things that I did in my life. It makes me feel better. So come and be part of our team. I'm sure you will not regret. Thank you so much for watching.